Hi, I'm, I'm glad you could stop by just for a moment. We're talking about the discovery of grace. Now, for the last six weeks, we've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit. And today we're looking at something that we receive before we begin to see the fruit of the Spirit growing in our lives. And that is grace. Now, the handbook for the year is called Discovery of Grace. And my hope is that as we've worked through the handbook, that you've discovered God's grace. Now, to be sure that you know what I mean when I say grace, let's define it. It's a multiple choice question. Is grace A, a girl's name, B, what you say before you eat, or C, giving someone something good that they don't deserve? So which do you think the correct answer is? A, a girl's name, B, what you say before you eat, or C, giving someone something good that they don't deserve. Okay, it's kind of a, tr a trick question because all of them could be correct answers. But the answer we're looking at in regard to this lesson and talking about now is C. Grace is giving someone something good that they don't deserve. Now, imagine this. Two brothers leave the house early one morning to go outside and play. They find this giant mud puddle. Now, I don't know about girls, or maybe I'm sure there are some girls, but guys just love to jump in a mud puddle and play in the mud. And again, not all guys, not all girls, but mud puddles are cool. So they know that they shouldn't be playing in the mud puddle because they're going to get all messy and yucky and it's just not good for them to do. But the temptation is so great that they begin to jump in it and throw mud on each other. And of course they're getting all messy. Mud everywhere all over them in their hair, all over their clothes. Their shoes are covered in mud. And shortly after they become covered in mud, their father shows up. And just looks at them with seeming disappointment that they knew better, but they still chose to jump in the mud and make a big mess. The boys know that they've done something wrong. And they're quiet, looking at their father, wondering, how is he going to react? Is he going to scream at them? Is he going to give them the punishment or the consequence that they deserve for, for their disobedience and their misbehavior? But then the father, still without saying anything, gets a garden hose and starts shooting them down with water in a fun way. Not in a mean way, but in a fun way. Cleaning the mud off of them. All the while, while they're getting cleaned off from the mud and the muck, they're having fun with the father. Shooting water on each other at this point. The dad's getting all wet. The kids are getting all wet. But the mud's also being cleaned off of them. The dirt and the muck is being cleaned off of them. That's grace. Because the father could have just grounded them, told them to go inside, clean up, and just stay in their rooms and take some privileges away from them. But he chose not to. He chose to show grace and to give them some fun instead of the potential consequence that they should have received. He gave them something good, which surprised them. They saw their father's grace in action. So that's what grace is. The boys didn't deserve it, but they got grace and had fun with their dad. And that's how it is with God. You see, we've all disobeyed God, and we've gotten into some messy situations, and we deserve the consequences from, from the actions that we've done. And the, and the Bible talks about those consequences in, in, in Romans you know, Roman 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The Bible clearly tells us what the consequence is for our sin. And clearly tells us the grace that gives us when we believe that gift of eternal life. It's clear. And so, in the example I gave, the Father offered grace with the water hose. See, now grace, this grace is a gift. Eternal life is a gift that God gives to us. And it's our choice whether to accept that gift, whether to accept that grace or not. Now, in the example of the boys 
and the mud, what would have happened? There were two boys there. What would have happened if the father came out the garden hose and started squirting them? And one of the boys says, no, I was bad. I was disobedient. I don't deserve to have this fun now because I disobeyed my father. And he walks off without getting hosed down, goes into the house by himself, takes his clothes off, takes a bath, washes the clothes by himself so his mom doesn't have to, and then goes to his room and he grounds himself because he knows that's the punishment that he deserves. He's taking it upon himself to try to correct the mistake that he made, and he's not accepting the grace that the Father is showing him. And that's what many try to do. Instead of accepting that gift of eternal life, that, that reestablishing that fellowship with God that we broke when we sinned, when we disobeyed Him, some people choose to walk away and try to do things on their own to make things right with God. But we can't clean ourselves up from our sin. The Bible tells us that there needs to be a sacrifice. And Jesus is the one who made that sacrifice for us when he came and he died on the cross for us. And again, we know this from Scripture. The first time we truly discover God's grace is when we realize what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross. Let's look at Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. You see, God gives us a gift of grace. He offers it to us freely. And by faith, we have to accept that gift. I didn't personally see Jesus die on the cross. I didn't see him rise from the dead. But I know from the Bible, I know from God's word, from scripture, and I know deep in my heart that God created the heavens and the earth Man sinned. God sent Jesus to earth as a human who died on the cross in my place. And he rose again the third day. And he sits at the right hand of the Father. And he's coming back again. See, we can't restore that fellowship with God by ourselves. We need to know and believe who Jesus is and what he did for us. It's by God's grace through our faith, not by works, or by obeying certain guidelines. It's not by doing more good than bad that we're saved. It's because of God. You see, if it was because of works, then people could boast. I could say, hey, I'm Commander Bill. I've got this great website, all these great resources. I must be great in the kingdom. But no. None of that is what gets me into heaven. None of that restores my fellowship with God. What restores my fellowship with God is what Jesus did for me and my faith in Him, that He died for me. And then He rose again, that He took my place on the cross. And when we understand God's grace, we want to follow Him and be more like Him. No matter what age we are, when we start to believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, when we begin to, when we begin to follow Jesus, our life should begin to resemble Luke 2.52. And in that passage, we, we see that Jesus went to the temple with his parents. And the parents left him, forgot him. But, and he's sitting there talking to the religious leaders of the day. And he's asking questions and answering questions and have, having a discussion with the leaders. And people are amazed at his knowledge and how he presents himself. And then in Luke 2.52, it says, And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man. Now, you see, at my age, I'm not going to grow in stature. I'm not going to grow in height. But I can grow in wisdom and in knowledge of God. And I can grow in favor with God and with man. See, I grow in favor with God when I believe Jesus died on the cross, and I'm following him, and I'm doing what I can to let that fruit of the Spirit that we've studied about for the last few weeks I let that fruit of the Spirit grow in me. And you grow in favor with man when they see your character. When they see that fruit growing inside of you. And they see God living in you. See, when we follow Jesus, we should be seeking to grow in wisdom. 
We should be seeking to grow in our knowledge of the Lord. And that's part of the change that comes into our lives when we accept Jesus, when we begin to follow Jesus and the Holy Spirit comes and lives in us. There should be a greater desire to learn the things of God and to be more like Jesus. And it all begins when we discover God's grace. And my prayer is that you will discover God's grace or that you have discovered God's grace. That you'll come to know, love, and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. That you will know how God had this planned from the beginning. And how through the old, entire Old Testament, throughout the entire Bible, we see how God planned for Jesus to die and be the sacrifice for us to die in our place on the cross. And when we come to know God's grace, then the fruit of the Spirit will begin to grow in us and others will see God in our lives. So, what will others see in our lives when we're growing in, in, in God, when we're growing in the Lord? They will see the fruit of the Spirit. And in case you forgot, the fruit of the Spirit, that's the verse for the week that we're memorizing. And this is from the ESV. In Galatians 6, 22-23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. It's not certain things we have to do to follow that enables this fruit to show. It's our growth in Jesus, growing in the Lord, allowing the Holy Spirit to live through us, that people will begin to see this fruit. It can't be forced. We can't force, be forced to love people. We can't force joy upon our face. It's something that's inside, that, that swells up inside, and we can't hold it back. Jesus, in John 15, 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. See, if we're not living in God, if we haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to come into us by believing that Jesus died on the cross for us, then that fruit can't grow. If we disassociate with God because we're not reading our Bible, we're not praying, and we're not doing certain things, which we'll get to in just, in just a moment, then we're not attached to the vine. We're not attached to Jesus. And so he can't give us what we need to grow in him. And it says, if a branch is dead, it casts it away. We need to be living in Jesus. He needs to be living and active in our lives through the Holy Spirit. And when we do that, when we're growing in God, people will see the fruit of the Spirit growing in us. And like I said, you can read the entire part of John chapter 15, verses 1 through 17, to get the full gist of what Jesus is saying when he says, I am the true vine. And that we need to abide in Him. Think of a fruit tree. It knows to grow apples or oranges because of the type of tree it is, because it's connected to the trunk. And the branches branch off, and that's where the fruit is born. That's where, that's where we see the fruit growing. I mean, and hopefully it's good fruit. It's a good branch and it's good fruit. When we're connected to Jesus, His fruit is what's going to be shown through us. And people will see that fruit. And they'll be drawn to us, they'll be drawn to Jesus through us because of what they see in us. So how do we abide in Jesus? First, we gather together with others who believe in Jesus and what he did for us and we encourage and support one another. That fellowship is important. In the very beginning in Genesis, God realized it wasn't good for man to be alone and so he made him a helpmate. We abide in Him when we talk to God on a regular basis, and that's through prayer, by praying, seeking God, just talking to God, thanking Him for what He's done, and saying, hey, God, can you help me in this area of my life? We read the Bible. We study the Bible. Now, studying the Bible can look differently for different people. For those of you in Awana, just the simple things, like 
in the TNT books, doing the Explore section, that's a small Bible study to help you get into the Word, to help you learn how to study. To read the information in the Awana handbooks and not just go to the verse, find the verse, and memorize the verse real quick. But read the rest of the section and see what's there. Sit down, talk to your parents, talk to somebody about it, talk to your Awana leaders about it. And that's why we have the small group time designed the way it is to give you a chance to talk about it and understand it. Listen to the pastor's message. Listen to the large group time message. Listen to others who have studied the Word. Share what they've learned about the Word so you can understand it more. And you want to learn from others who follow Jesus. And so, as I wrap this up, I want you to take some time, talk to your parents or, or someone and then discuss these questions. Think about these questions and just kind of talk about them for a few minutes. One, when do we first truly discover God's grace? The second question, what does it mean to grow in grace? The third question, what is one way that you are growing in God this week? And fourth, is there someone you know who's older than you, who follows Jesus, who displays the fruit of the Spirit in their life? And if there is, then how can you get to know that person better so you can learn from their example of following Jesus? So I want you to take a few minutes and look at those questions, discuss those questions amongst yourselves, amongst your family, and just Take this time just to grow closer to God in your home tonight, or today. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your word that guides us and gives us direction into how we should live our lives. We thank you that we're able to come to you in prayer and hear from you, whether it's through your word or, or, or the Holy Spirit speaking in our lives, that you can guide and direct our lives so that we can grow closer to you. And Father, we just pray, I just pray, that if anybody here listening, watching, has not discovered your grace, does not know or fully believe what Jesus did for them dying on the cross, I pray that they'll talk to somebody, that they will, they will discover your grace. And I pray that people will see the fruit of the Spirit growing in each of our lives, so that it might draw them closer to you. Just thank you for your word. Thank you for what Jesus did for us dying on the cross. And thank you for how you're involved in our lives every single day. In your name, amen. Until next time. Bye.